Hasta la vista, baby. Get away from her, you bitch! What's going on Batman fans, Ryan O'Toole back here again giving you guys another ranking. If you guys are new here, feel free to click that subscribe button and that bell notification icon for more reviews, reactions, rankings, and more movie content. Matt Reeves the Batman has finally released in theaters this weekend and people are loving this movie all across the board. Now that that movie's released, it's finally time to give you guys my ranking of all 14 Batman movies from worst to best. Now, just to clarify, this is not every single Batman movie ever made. Not all the animated movies are going to be on this list. These are all the Batman movies that I have seen. Even though some of these movies, Batman is not the lead character, but he has a presence in those movies. Like, these are the movies where Batman is in them that I have seen. Let me know down below in the comment section what your guys' ranking would be for all the Batman movies. If you want to include every single animated movie mixed with live action, definitely do that in the comment section below. And keep in mind, this is my ranking. All film is subjective. Batman films are very subjective. So let's agree to disagree and respect each other's opinions down below. So without further ado, guys, let's get started. Shall we? I think it's pretty easy to say that Justice League deserves to be at the bottom spot here. This is not the right version of Justice League. We now have the right version. And Joss Whedon and Warner Brothers did some really shady stuff in the background. After all the drama with Zack Snyder and what happened to his daughter, Warner Brothers put the trust on Joss Whedon to take over the reins and finish Zack Snyder's vision. And what does he do? He makes a completely different movie, completely erases Zack Snyder's vision, and makes it a goofball fest. Batman in this movie's a joke. Like, he doesn't even do anything. Like, all he does is punch out jokes and just does nothing. I absolutely hated Justice League. Like, everything about this movie is terrible, and thank goodness we have the right version of Justice League, and we don't even have to worry about this one anymore. It all comes together. We're going to need a bigger cave. Batman and Robin. The movie you expect it to be in last place, but Batman and Robin, we can all agree, is a very terrible movie. Like, everything about this movie was poorly directed, poorly executed, and Joel Schumacher himself agrees with us. This movie is a two-hour lawn toy commercial with terrible puns from Mr. Freeze by Arnold Schwarzenegger. Get to the cooler! Cool party! Like, some terrible puns right there from Arnold. And George Clooney bat nipples. Like, who asked for that? But at the end of the day, this movie is very entertaining to laugh at. Like, it's a terribly made movie. We can all laugh at how terrible Bane is, how terrible Mr. Freeze is, Poison Ivy, George Clooney, Chris O'Donnell. Like, this movie is one of the worst superhero movies ever made. But the reason why it's at this spot, I enjoy watching it compared to Justice League. Courage now, truth always, Batman forever. Another Joel Schumacher Batman movie with Batman Forever. This movie is not a good movie at all. It's not as bad as Batman and Robin, but the movie altogether is forgettable. Val Kilmer is an okay Bruce Wayne and not a very good Batman, and I just didn't really buy the Dick Grayson storyline in here. I would say the saving grace of this movie is Jim Carrey's Riddler, even though it is a very over-the-top, obnoxious Jim Carrey performance, at least he's having a blast playing the Riddler. It's extremely silly and over-the-top, and Gotham doesn't look existent at all compared to Tim Burton's vision. So altogether, Batman Forever is not a good movie at all. I think this movie has subpar direction, good entertaining moments from the Riddler. Besides that, pretty forgettable movie. She with you? 
I thought she was with you. Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. Now I know you guys are automatically say, Ryan, this isn't a Batman movie, it's a Superman Man of Steel sequel. And yes, but Batman's in the movie, so I included BVS in this ranking. And we're talking about the Ultimate Edition here. Let's forget the theatrical edition exists. The Ultimate Edition is an improvement, but again, it is not a great movie altogether. It is slightly better, but besides that, pretty meh. Ben Affleck is a fantastic Batman. That warehouse sequence is absolutely amazing. Definitely the best sequence of this entire movie. Batman saves this movie, Wonder Woman tries, and Superman is not great from Henry Cavill. But altogether, Batman v Superman crammed so much subplots in it, it ruined the movie. Zack Snyder has proven he can be a good director, and Batman is the saving grace of this movie altogether. So yeah, BVS, not a great movie altogether. Exciting exploits ahead in our first feature motion picture. Holy memoranda, folks. Make a note not to miss it. Good thinking, Robin. Yeah, this definitely shows how old I am. Next we got Adam West's Batman the Movie 1966. Now, I never grew up watching the live action Batman animated series from the 60s, and Adam West is a very <laughs> funny and over the top Batman, but again, I don't gravitate towards it. If you grew up watching the TV series, this movie will definitely be higher for you. But I never grew up watching Adam West. I do respect his love and his passion, his over-the-topness as Batman and Robin in here. And you got some really over-the-top versions of the Riddler, the Joker, and Catwoman. I'm more into the dark and gritty serious Batman compared to the silly over-the-top version. But Batman the movie is entertaining. Wait till they get a load of me. I'm probably gonna get a lot of shit from people in the comments, but Tim Burton's Batman 1989. I mean, this is the one that started the live action Batman movies, for sure. The best part about this movie is how Gotham City looks. It's totally Gotham City, and Tim Burton did a great job making Gotham look cool and awesome. And Michael Keaton's Batman is just an awesome Batman, but I'm not really a big fan of his Bruce Wayne. Michael Keaton is serviceable as Bruce Wayne, but he definitely get overshadowed by Jack Nicholson's Joker in here. Very over-the-top iconic Jack Nicholson Joker performance in here. All around, it's a very good Batman Joker movie. You got Kim Basinger in here, who's pretty serviceable. But altogether, Batman 1989 is a good setup for the live-action Batmans. And this movie holds up in terms of Batman and Gotham City and the Joker, but the Bruce Wayne aspect didn't sell it for me. We're just gonna gently ease out of here, real gentle like. Next is the Lego Batman movie. I really love this movie. And unpopular opinion, I may like it a dash more than the Lego movie. Of course you guys know I'm a big Batman fan and I love just the comedy of this movie. It's just absolutely hilarious from the opening, the middle to the end. Will Arnett as Batman is hilarious, but Zach Galifianakis as the Joker steals the show. I love this romance kind of story Batman and Joker have. Like Joker just kind of is attracted to Batman in some weird way. But the best part about this movie is it celebrates Batman, but also really makes fun of it. It's perfect to poke fun at Batman, very easy, and I just really love the Lego Batman movie. It's very hilarious and just really well written. He said the age of heroes would never come again. It will. It has to. Thank goodness we got the right version of Justice League. Zack Snyder's voice was heard. Batman out of the Justice League isn't the shiner in here, but Ben Affleck's Batman, he's more like the leader, kind of like the fatherly figure that brings the Justice League together, kind of like the Tony Stark. And this movie really is Cyborg's movie, let's be real. They made every League member extremely well-balanced within the core group of the team, and Batfleck 
is really the leader of the core. So altogether, Zack Snyder's Justice League was a really great movie, a little, little too long. Above Gotham looms its greatest... Unpopular opinion, I like Batman Returns more than Batman 1989. This is a darker sequel, and if you know me, I'm kind of a sequels guy, and Batman Returns is just awesome. It's definitely a Christmas movie, the way it opens up with Penguin's parents pretty much throwing him, chucking him overboard. We get the introduction to Penguin. Danny DeVito is super over the top in that role. Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman is amazing, and Michael Keaton's Batman is much better. It's a lot darker, it's more violent and more interesting. A lot of the characters are great. Christopher Walken is so entertaining in here. Altogether, Batman Returns is much better than the first movie, and I just really enjoy the Christmas aspects. And be too careful with all those weirdos around. A sorry new adventure. Batman, Mask of the Phantasm. Batman Mask of the Phantasm, by far the most underrated Batman movie and the best animated Batman film. This movie really explored the character of Bruce Wayne, his origin story, but in animation. It's a really great movie, a great Batman film, and a great Bruce Wayne film. The Phantasm, a villain we have never seen before, get introduced into here. That twist is definitely great. Mark Hamill's Joker, so iconic. And this movie is hugely slept on. If you haven't seen Mask of the Phantasm, definitely watch it. It's a really great Batman movie. Altogether around just makes Batman great. Kevin Conroy, the OG Batman for animation. And this is a great movie. film that gets a lot of crap nowadays, but I love The Dark Knight Rises. And unpopular opinion, I know we have the Nolan trilogy in the top five, but The Dark Knight Rises, in my opinion, is an excellent and emotional conclusion to Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy. The Dark Knight Rises really explored a lot of how a superhero can be broken, and Batman is the most physically broken he's ever been. Eight years later, after the Harvey Dent incident, of course he's gonna be broken. And Bane is an absolutely terrifying villain. I love Tom Hardy's performance in here. And Bane is probably Gotham's biggest threat, even over the Joker. Yes, this movie has a lot of flaws, and <laughs> a lot of plot holes. How they were able to stuck all those cops down in the sewers and Bruce Wayne getting back to Gotham, I'm able to forgive those plot holes because this movie is so damn epic. I love The Dark Knight Rises, the way it's directed. All around, I love this movie. I don't care. Up. The greatest origin story still for any comic book movies, Batman Begins, like, think about the big stakes this movie had going in. After Batman and Robin, fans wanted a great Batman movie again, and Batman Begins did that. Nolan's filmmaking was able to ground Batman a lot more, getting into Bruce Wayne's origin story, the death of his parents, training with Ra's al Ghul, and the League of Shadows was amazing. I love Liam Neeson as Ra's al Ghul, great villain. But this was a Batman movie, and fans love that. Michael Caine as Alfred is amazing. Why do we fall, Bruce? So we could pick ourselves back up again. Such a great line. I use that line still to this day. And Batman Begins, excellent origin story. Had to be high on this list. This was really difficult. Which movie is better, my number one or two? And The Batman comes in at number two. I just uploaded my review, guys. You can go check it out on the channel. And you guys saw I was raving about this film. The Batman is the perfect Batman movie ever. Fans have been complaining. Batman's been getting overshadowed by the villains. And in here, Robert Pattinson steals this entire film. This is his movie, Robert Pattinson, my favorite Batman. And Matt Reeves' direction is absolutely amazing in this movie. Zoe Kravitz is Catwoman, Jeffrey Wright, Paul Dano's Riddler is terrifying. Like, the Batman is absolutely amazing, guys. My review is out. You can go check out my review. And I cannot wait to watch this movie again. Let's put a smile on 
on that face. <laughs> Coming in at number one, guys, it's still The Dark Knight. I still think The Dark Knight is the greatest CBM movie of all time. Regardless of how amazing the Batman was, it could possibly overtake it in the future, but The Dark Knight is The Dark Knight. This is not only still the greatest comic book movie ever made, it's one of the greatest movies ever made. Like, we can thank Christopher Nolan for Matt Reeves' Batman being as great as it is. Because this movie changed the game for comic book movies. They weren't being taken seriously back in this day. But because of Iron Man and The Dark Knight, people are taking superhero movies now seriously. And I do not get this criticism. Heath Ledger saves this movie. I do not get that criticism. Do not overlook Bale, Eckhart, Gordon. Everything else is great next to Heath Ledger. I don't see any flaws with The Dark Knight. To me, it is a perfect movie altogether, and it is still my favorite of the Batman movies. There you have it, guys. That was my ranking for all the Batman movies. Get down below in the comment section, guys. I'm sure you disagree with my list. Let me know your list down below, and let's have a respectful conversation. Thank you guys, as always, for watching this ranking. All my social media links are in the description below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.